Scream 5. Again, no spoilers. Scream 5. Uh, let's look at the box office for this movie, okay? This this ties into my topic at hand, too, about slashers <laughs> making a comeback. So, box office. Scream debuts to bloody impressive $30.6 million. And, guys, this is... This is at one of the roughest times in the pandemic. Sorry, in the pandemic. Like there, there's been different hills and valleys in this whole pandemic thing. Um, and we were out of the wood or almost out of the woods there for quite a few months. And, and we thought, okay, we're, we're home free. 2022 is going to be awesome. And then boom, the holidays happened. Everybody went to go visit their families. And the spread happened again. This is not going to be a political discussion because it's sad that this thing became political, but I'm not going to talk about what's right and what's wrong. Okay. We're here to talk about horror and we're here to talk about scream, but that that's a fact. That's why uh, the box office is hurting right now, you know, because of this theater's closing because of fear, because of all this stuff. But despite that, Scream debuted to 30.6 million. And, and uh, there was somebody on Twitter that they said that um, Scream made more than Halloween Kills because it made 50, uh, 55 million globally. And I quickly corrected them because I'm a Halloween fanboy. No, that, that had nothing to do with it. But I did correct them because Halloween made, I think, around 55 million domestic. So. But I mean, th- still, th- I think Halloween came out when the it was uh, it wasn't as bad, you know. There were more theaters were open, so if I think if we weren't in this situation, Scream would have probably made another twenty million, you know. Um, Scream, a reimagining of a horror franchise that once appeared to have run out of steam, dominated the box office this weekend, earning a scary good thirty point six million. The sequel is pro, uh, projected to earn $35 million over the four-day Martin Luther King holiday weekend, a spectacular result considering that Scream only cost $25 million to produce. Yeah, I knew, it, I knew that this movie didn't cost that much, so it, it's already made its money back. Uh, it also represents some positive news for the bruised and battered cinema industry considering that Scream's success comes amid a spike in COVID-19. It helps that Scream's target demographic is younger, which means that they may not have been as spooked by the highly contagious Omicron variant that is fueling the latest uh, iteration of a seemingly endless pandemic. Uh, Paramount and Spyglass Media backed the reboot, marking the first new chapter in the Scream series in a decade. It shares a title with the 96 original Blah, blah, blah. The film also uh, brings back familiar faces. Blah, blah, blah. We don't need to read that. We don't need to read that. Hold on. Um, so, yeah. Basically, Scream made $30.6 million. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, during the pandemic, slasher movies, they seem to be making money. They seem to be really popular. Um, Halloween Kills made um like i said like 55 million again in a pandemic um that it's not as much as halloween 2018 made but it's still a hell of a lot of money um so you got those two things right there and then just recently there was some good news for the the friday the 13th the lawsuit um I don't think it's fully over. And somebody in the chat let me know if I'm wrong here. But didn't uh, Victor Miller win? Like he won. So now they can go forward and they can they can make a new movie. Uh, and you know what? Thinking back, guys, too. Like after the Paramount years, they never used the Friday the 13th name anyway up until the remake. So I think we could still get a Friday movie without the Friday the 13th name. And, and uh, Sean Cunningham can't use that name anymore, I believe. Um, so I don't know what that... May, or maybe they'll come to an agreement with Victor Miller. And so Victor Miller will get a piece of that pie. But, you know, I think with the success of both Halloween movies, and now I think it's safe to say we this is a success. Scream made a good amount of money. And um, I think I think it's good for the business. I think they're going to start really taking a look at Friday the 13th 
and maybe even Nightmare on Elm Street. Teeth was my high school basement movie. What is a high school basement movie? Is that a movie that, is that like a guilty pleasure? Is that something that you uh, you don't want your friends to know that you're watching? Like, um, what, it, let, let me ask you guys another, I love asking you guys questions, all right? I got another one, okay? Have you ever been in a situation where you're watching a horror movie? And you know how us horror fans are, right? There's certain movies in our collection where like, I don't want anybody to come in while I'm watching this one, okay? This one's just for me. Life Force, thank you very much, Terry. That's a good one too. You son of a bitch. You're watching a horror movie and we could watch Scream and somebody could come in and we would we'd be fine, right? But there's certain horror movies that we could be watching and if somebody came in, it would be the most awkward, embarrassing thing ever, okay? So here's my question for you guys. What is a horror movie that you would not want anyone to walk in and catch you watching? Okay, just because it would be awkward. Not saying you wouldn't enjoy the movie. I guess, so, so we could call this a basement horror movie, all right? A basement horror movie. What's a, what's a horror movie that you always have your one eye on the door and one eye straight on the, the, the TV because you don't want them to see you watching it? All right, Last House on the Left is a really good answer. Now, here's, my answer is Antichrist. <laughs> like, Antichrist, I don't even think I'd want, like, a, a diehard horror fan. Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't even think I'd want a diehard horror fan to watch in, uh, to walk in. Because that, uh, the, and if you've seen Antichrist, you know the scene I'm talking about, okay? Because, oh my God, I, like, I don't even want to watch it. Like, that's that's a movie I've seen a couple times. I've probably watched the scene in question once. And, I, and after, I was like, oh God, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm clocking out. Okay, I'm sliding down my brontosaurus neck, and I'm I'm heading to the his house because I can't. I'm not watching this shit. That's that's too much. Rob Zombie's H two. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> that is a Beth. What's up? That is a perfect answer. Rob Zombie's Halloween two. Oh my god, I, you teed me right up for that one because I could share this story. I was. <laughs> I saw Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 um, on on Halloween on Devil's Night, I guess, October 30th. The movie came out in August, I think, but I was in Japan at the time. And so it, over in Japan, there's no way they're going to be showing Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, or at least nowhere near where I can get to it, right? So I was scared. I was like, I've never missed a Halloween movie on the big screen since Halloween 4. So I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to see this movie on the big screen. And so... What had happened was, when I got back to the States, I got back literally on Devil's Night. And they were they were showing Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 on two nights only. They were showing it again, like they re-released it on uh, October 30th and October 31st. Um, I was so damn excited. And, I, and I, let me tell you guys, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 had the trailer. You, 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 know, you guys know that trailer that you see and you're like, holy shit, this is going to be good. I cannot wait to see. For some reason, that trailer for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, oh my God, I was just like, God, I cannot wait to see this movie. You know, And I think Rob Zombie makes great trailers. He really makes great trailers. Not always great movies, but really great trailers luckily i ended up loving rob zombie's halloween too but the the we're, i'm staying on the topic of embarrassing movies okay embarrassing movies so i watched this movie with my wife and my niece my, and my niece would probably be around 20 at the time and it was literally just us in the theater just the three of us and and, and we're sitting there watching this movie and we get to the cow, the cow scene. And, and the fuck, 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 fuck. This is the moment where it got uncomfortable for me. This is the moment where I was like, why, oh, why did I bring them to this movie? <laughs> if I could take anything back from this day, it would be bringing them to this movie. I have made a terrible 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 mistake yeah it was worse than human centipede one two and three maybe not but it was it was just bad because everything about the movie you know you have certain friends 
or, or certain people in your life, they like thrillers, they like scream, you know, but there's a there's a threshold there that you don't cross, okay? And Rob Zombie usually is on the other side of that threshold. So luckily for me, I look over and I see that they are, both of them are literally like, they are both fucking out, completely out cold. They both literally fell asleep at the beginning of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Actually, let me, I'm, th- I'm thinking back, hold on. Or maybe it was just, yeah, I know for a fact my wife was asleep. I think my um, my niece was awake, but she might as well have been asleep because her her face was like this through the whole movie. Like, I don't know if it was fear. Still to this day, I haven't asked her. Like, I don't even know, I don't know what it was, but she looked like she was in a state of shock throughout the whole movie. Like, what the fuck am I watching? You know? That's Rob Zombie's Halloween too. It's not for everybody. And... You know, the entire movie's like that. The entire movie's like that. And you're like, yeah, this is not for every... I mean, I love Rob Zombie's Halloween, dude. Don't get me wrong, but man. Yeah, that that's a basement. <laughs> I guess that would be a ba- uh, I Spit on Your Grave. I have never in my life watched I Spit on Your Grave with anybody else. That is a movie... Even horror fans cannot watch that movie together. It's just... It, it's there, There's too much. It's too much. You can't deal with it is this a clip am i did i just set up a clip basement horror movies that you don't watch with other people i think i just did we talked about it for like 10 minutes didn't we i think it worked out i i like reading you guys' comments i had another question for you too i like testing you guys i like testing you guys i think a remake of maniac cop in today's society would be oh my god chris you're right that could be an interesting And you know what, Chris, you just teed me right up for the question that I was going to ask you because it involves a cop and action. You know, you know, those movies like uh, like Cobra, uh, where it's kind of an action slasher. Um, Oh, my God. I was about to give you guys the answer. Uh, The question is, okay, give me a slasher movie that has a naked killer. Let me repeat that. Give me a slasher movie that has a naked killer. Can you do it? Can you do it? And there might be more than one answer, but I can only think of one answer, all right? I'm curious to see if you guys know the answer. And I would say this movie's fucking awesome. I love this freaking movie. Manhunt. Yes, that is a, that is a correct answer. It's not the answer I'm looking for. Um, uh, Sleepaway Camp. That. Oh my God, you're right, Sleepaway Camp. I could do it. Can I do a top? Thank you, the Intel Wild. That's the one I was looking for. 10 to Midnight, the killer is naked throughout the entire movie. Um, Jennifer's body, does is there a naked killer in Jennifer's body? I don't think, what, does she get, she gets naked coming out of the lake, but does she kill anybody while she's naked? I don't think she does. I don't think she does. But 10 to Midnight, guys, that's a freaking awesome movie. And I'll bet a lot of you haven't seen it, all right? Charles Bronson, baby, Charles Bronson. Um, Charles Bronson has one of my favorite scenes all time in a movie it's not 10 to midnight and some of you guys might be able to help me with which movie it is okay let me set this scene up for you all right um charles bronson goes into this restaurant to question this guy that's like seven feet tall i mean he's fucking massive massive so charles bronson he walks up to the guy and the guy and charles bronson looks really short i don't know how tall charles bronson was but he looks really short and so The seven foot giant, while he's sitting down at the table, he basically, and I'm paraphrasing, but he tells Charles Bronson, scurry along, you know, you're wasting my time. You know, I could, I could step on you and kill you, right? Species, thank you very much. That's a good one too. And so you guys like that question, don't you? I like that question. Um, Did Sliver have a a naked killer? I I think Sliver did have a naked killer. Am I right on that? Um, and so anyway, yeah, the scene, Charles Bronson, big seven foot guy, right? So what does Charles Bronson do? He reaches down like, like super lightning fast. He reaches down, grabs the bottom of the chair, flips it back, and he puts his foot on the guy's neck and he grabs with both hands, with both hands, he grabs the guy's nuts. And so let me, let me demonstrate it for you. So... Like, here's Charles Bronson, and he's got his foot on the guy's nuts. 
He reaches down. No, no, he's got his foot on his neck. He's got his foot on his neck. He reaches down, grabs the guy by the nuts, and yanks up. Yanks up. And at, the guy is, like, screaming, and he keeps pulling. Like, just imagine a hand full of seven-foot guy nuts. And he's pulling on the guy's nuts as he's got his foot on his neck. The scene is on YouTube. It's the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay? It's the greatest thing I've ever seen on my life. What is Sliver again? I can't even remember. I forgot. 